Welcome back, friends. Dan Vega here. I hope you are all having a wonderful day. Recently, I put up a question on Twitter and I said, hey, I make a lot of spring-related content on this channel, and rightfully so, I'm a spring developer advocate, but I'd like to be creating more Java content, both in the form of YouTube videos and writing. So I asked for some suggestions. I got a lot of really great replies, so thank you for that. I'm still kind of sifting through those, figuring out which ones I can go ahead and tackle. One of the questions I got was, hey, what is this double colon thing in Java and when should I reach for it? So I thought this would be a really good opportunity to talk about Java method references. So uh, to do so, I'm gonna hop over to danvega.dev. If you're new here, this is my personal website. I have a lot of free content on there and you can learn more about me. But if you head over to the blog and you check out this link, you can also do a command K to search for Java method references and jump right to it. So I have a blog post that will accompany this video. I will put a link to that in the description below. Um, so let's just dive right in. What are method references? Uh, this was introduced in Java 8. It's a way to write concise shorthand uh, code for referencing methods or constructors. Think of them in the, as an easy way to say, hey, Java, use this method here without writing out the entire method call. They work hand in hand with Lambda expressions to bring a touch of functional programming to Java. So when you hear functional programming, a lot of the features that came in Java 8 were related to functional programming like lambdas and streams and method references. Now here's the, here's the big thing for me. Like, okay, that's cool, but why should I care? Uh, wh why should I bother learning this thing? So here are, thing, here are three really good reasons, I think, to use them. Cleaner code. Method references can significant, significantly reduce boilerplate, making your code more concise and easier to read. One of the things that we do as developers, I don't think we think about this a lot. We think as developers, we're here to write code, but we read a lot more code than we are writing. And so if we can make code a little bit more concise and readable for future me or your teammates, uh, that is a big pro for me. Increased productivity. Less code to write means more time for solving real problems. Who doesn't want that? And three, better expressiveness. To help you express your intent more clearly, uh, especially in a functional style of programming. So there are basically four types of method references, and we are going to go through these in this tutorial. And to do so, we're going to create a new Java project, and from there, uh, we'll talk about these four with some code examples. So what are we waiting for? Let's write some code. All right, so I am going to use IntelliJ's Ultimate Edition here to create this new project. You can do this in the Community Edition. You can use something like Visual Studio Code, Eclipse, whatever your favorite editor of choice is. Please go ahead and use that. Um, in IntelliJ, I can create a new Java project by doing new pro file, new project, and picking Java. I'm going to call this, um, let's say, method references. And I am, and this is a Java project. We are going to use Maven. I'm using Java 21. You need to be on at least eight. Uh, but some of the features I use in here may be a little bit further. So just use something modern. We'll say dev.danvega and method references. Now we're using Maven. Uh, if Maven's kind of new to you, uh, you can just create a, an empty Java project using, uh, in this case, the IntelliJ build system. We're not adding any external dependencies. Uh, I do have an introduction to Maven on this channel, so I will go ahead and link to that as well. So we're going to create this project. And that will drop us into this project. Here is our Maven Palm. Again, I don't need any external dependencies, so I'm not going to care about that right now. So now I can go into source main Java. I'm going to create a new class in here. We'll just call this application. And inside of application, I'm going to create a public static void main. And inside of here, we will talk about the four different reasons to use uh, method references. So let's start with number one, reference to a static method. So let's say we go ahead and say we have a list of some numbers. We'll call this one, two, three, four, five. That seems good. I'll go ahead and create a variable for this, and we will call this numbers. And from there, I want to go ahead and iterate over these and print them out to the council. So before something like method references, I might have done something like numbers.for, whoops, numbers.for each. 
and in there I will get a reference to the number and then for each number I can say system.out.println and I can pass in the number. So if we did this, let's go ahead and run this, uh, we see that we print each of those numbers on a separate line. Now IntelliJ is already helping us out here saying, hey, lambdas can, lambda can re be replaced with a method reference. So um, that is one thing we can do, or we can come in here and we can say, let's get rid of this. Uh, let's talk about why though. So again, reference to a static method. So what we can do here, instead of just saying that, we can say system.out, and then we can come in here and use the double colon, which indicates a method reference, and we can say print line. So that kind of shortens up that lambda expression into just using a method reference. So again, we can go ahead and run this, and we should get the same result. All right, number two is going to be referencing to an instance method inside of a particular object. To do so, I'm going to create a new class here. We'll come in here and say Java class greeter. And inside of greeter, we are going to create a simple method. So public void greet, and this will take in a name. And all we want to do with this is print out the uh, phrase hello, and then we can print out the name with it, right? So we have this method called greet, and uh, what we might have done before here is come in here and say, uh, let's create a new instance of greeter. So I'll say new greeter dot bar, uh, greeter, that looks good. And then what I can come in here and do is create a list of names. So I'm going to say list.of, and I'm going to create some names. I'll say Dan, Jen, Isabella, and Juliana, right? Spell your daughter's name right, Dan. And we'll create a var for this. I'll call this family. And now that I have a list of names, I want to pass those each into that greeter, that greet function. So I could say family dot for each, and I can pass in um, the uh, name. So we're taking a, a lambda expression here. And then for each name, I want to say greeter dot greet, and we're going to pass in the name there. So this will work um, if we go ahead and run this application. We can see it says, hello, Dan, hello, Jen, hello, is a, you know, so on. So you get the, the point there. But we can go ahead and replace this with a method reference. And again, I think one of the things I'd like to stress here is the power of using a good IDE. Even if you didn't know this was a possibility, I, I sometimes write code and I forget features. And the ID, like IntelliJ here, is, is there to help me write better code. So it's saying, hey, uh, you can go ahead and replace that with this. All right, so let's look at number three, reference to an instance method of an arbitrary object of a particular type. All right, so for this, I'm going to go in and create a list of names. Let's say arrays uh, as lists. The reason I'm not using list.of here is because list.of will create an immutable list, and we want to be able to change the order here. So I'm going to say um, arrays.as list. Let's say Tasha. Let's say Dan. Let's say uh, Josh. Let's say Deshaun. Uh, let's say Cora. Whitney and Cote. Okay, so we go ahead and create a list of names here. So let me say var, I'll say family. And now what I want to do with family is I want to say, oops, let's say var and let's call this team. So with team, I want to do something here. I want to go ahead and sort them. So I could say team.sort. And I can take in string one and string two. And then what I can do is compare them. I can say s1 dot compare to s2, right? That should sort them out. Uh, let's actually ignore case. And that will sort them out. And then I can go ahead and uh, print out my team. And if I run this, I should get the names in uh, alphabetical order there. They're sorted now. 
Um, again, we can go ahead and replace this with a method reference. So we can say replace, and now all we're doing is saying, hey, on the string class, uh, use the method compared to ignoring case, and those values will be passed in accordingly. All right, and for the final one, we are going to reference a constructor. So to do that, I'm going to create a new Java class. I'm going to call this person. Uh, let's go ahead and create a variable in here. Let's say private final string name. We'll need a constructor to initialize that uh, name. And then back in our application class here, we can go ahead and uh, create some names. So let's say arrays.asList, and we will say Alice, uh, Bob, and we will say Charlie. So from there, I can go ahead and create some names. And now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and call that constructor for each of them. So one thing I can do is use the Java 8 streams API. And from there, I can go ahead and say, I want to map each of those values into something new. And what is that something new? It's going to be a person object. Now, I could take that name, and then I could say new person and pass that name in. From there, I can use the toList method to return a list, and I could call this people. So this is going to work, but you'll see IntelliJ is letting us know that we can make a change here. We can replace that with a method reference. So here we're saying person. We're calling the new uh, operate. Or the, we're basically calling the constructor on it. So we're saying new, and that will pass in the name. And now we get a list of people. So we can go ahead and print those out if we want. Save that. Run that. And those have those. Uh, that's referencing the. Uh, memory, let's go ahead and create a quick two string. So I'll generate a two string and there, and now back in here, I can go ahead and run this again. And now we have our persons, uh, our people, Alice, Bob, and Charlie. So that is uh, a beginner's guide to Java method references with some uh, simple examples to kind of show you the different use cases for when you might want to reach for a Java method reference. As I said, I will go ahead and leave a link to this blog post in the description below, as well as the GitHub repository. If you have other questions in Java that you'd like to see me create some content around, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. But friends, if you found value in this, you could do me a big, big favor. Please do me a favor and leave me a thumbs up on this. Uh, subscribe to the channel, and as always, Happy coding.